registering for this uh, virtual event that's taking place because of COVID. Um, but here we are at TTS, at uh, the Northern Ireland Apprenticeship Week. So this webinar is designed to give you information as applicants, as apprentices, as employers, as careers advisors. Um, so hopefully you'll learn something from tonight's event. Uh, my name is Stephen Wilkinson. I'm the, the training director here at TTS. And it's my joy to be the host for tonight's uh, webinar. I want to give you a quick rundown, a quick overview of, of the format for tonight's webinar. We're going to start off with a virtual tour and let you see the premises and the, the facilities up here at TTS. And then we'll, we'll um, head from that into a presentation that's going to be uh, held by our, our careers development officer, Robert Dagnan. And then we'll, we'll round off the evening with a question and answer session. And we have a panel of folks who will be able to answer the questions. We've had a few questions come in already um, through our, our outreach to folks. But um, if you have a question, there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom window, or there's a chat button. I'll be keeping an eye on both. And uh, if there's a question that pops into your mind, just feel free to ask that question. And hopefully, one of the panelists will be able to answer those questions for you. I'm going to take a, a couple of minutes to introduce the panel to you. And uh, I'll maybe give them a few seconds just to, to explain what, uh, what their roles are. So first uh, on my list is Billy Muskelly. Billy is the director at Gus Commercials. Um, Billy has partnered with TTS for quite a while now. Um, Billy, can you, can you just tell our audience a wee bit about Gus Commercials and why and what influenced you to uh, partner with TTS for your apprenticeship needs? Yes, indeed. Welcome everyone, Billy Muskelly here. I'm the managing director of Gus Commercials. <clears throat> We're a hire company with a workshop. We do vehicle sales as well in a parts department. So we have workshop, uh, an HGV workshop, but we work at vans and cars as well. We have eight technicians and two apprentices. And we're about to open a second workshop that specializes in vans and cars, and it'll have four technicians and one apprentice. So that's going to open quite shortly for us. We have used TTS, so we have um, to help us with our apprentices. They're our partner, so they are. They source them for us. We interview them together. And then away we go. They supply the training. We supply workshop, the practical side of it. And we find that works well. Um, they keep in touch with us during the duration of that. And I'd just like to say, Stephen, thank you for asking me to attend tonight. I believe young people are our future. So they are for our industry. And it's very exciting and changing times. A lot of new technology coming on board and the propulsion of vehicles. And I just think it's a great time for young people to get involved. Everything moves by road in Northern Ireland. Great future. Thank you. Okay, that's great, Billy. Thank you very much. And yeah, we're, we're, we're hitting the right, uh, the right buttons there. You know, when you look at the, the technology that's coming on board, hybrid vehicles, electric vehicles, and now hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, it's, it's a great time to be a technician and to learn all these new techniques. Uh, next, on, next on my list is Darren Cochran. Uh, Darren is the personnel manager at the new group. Uh, Darren, you're very welcome. And can you please tell us a wee bit about your role with the new group and, and what you would be looking for in an apprentice applicant, maybe? Okay, sure. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Darren Cochran. I'm personnel manager for the group, as Stephen says. Um, the Agnew Group, we look after uh, 13 different dealerships across Belfast, Portobello, and Molusk, um, mostly premium brands, uh, although we do have some used car operations in there too. Um, I'm the personnel manager there, and I've worked there for five years. Prior to that, my background was uh, not in the motor trade, actually in supermarket retailing, so very, very different, um, although a lot of the skills needs are very similar. Um, in terms of our apprenticeships, we are really proud to work with TTS. Um, we've worked hard to foster our relationship and it's grown every year really since I've been there. Um, I think the real, for us, the real benefits in terms of what an apprenticeship brings us, um, there's, there's lots, um, particularly around training and, and skills. But I, I think probably the biggest benefit that, that you won't see anywhere in Google, if you Google it, is apprentices really help change our culture. They bring in wealth of uh, outside influence that otherwise we wouldn't necessarily get in our, in our workshops, particularly if we're recruiting 
qualified technicians because they come from what they know. When we bring in apprentices, they bring a new perspective to it. Um, the blended learning works really well with TTS, you know, so we're not so good at giving them theory. We're very good at giving them practical, and that's where TTS come in. You guys are very good at covering all of the theory with them, and that works very well in tandem whenever we, we balance it and get, get that balance right. Thanks again for inviting me along tonight. I really appreciate it. And again, I'm happy to take questions from anybody regarding any, any elements that we can. Okay, that's great, Darren. Thank you very much. Uh, next to my list is Caroline Delaney. Caroline is a third year apprentice heavy vehicle technician with the Donnelly Group. Uh, Caroline, you're very welcome along tonight. One question I want to ask you just off, off the top of my head is, why did you choose TTS as opposed to any other college or, or whatever, going to university or whatever might have been your, your career plan? Um, so personally for me, I did university and I did not enjoy it. It was all theory. There was no hands-on and I'm a very hands-on learner. So for me, TTS was a very obvious choice. It has great workshop and the theory again is brilliant and just I oh, couldn't have got it anywhere else. I really don't think I could have done. Okay, that's brilliant, Caroline. That's a good endorsement for TTS. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, finally, on our panel tonight uh, is one of our young people, Sam Haran. Sam is a second year apprentice light vehicle technician with the Belfast Audi Group, uh, which is part of the IGNU Group. Uh, Sam, you're coming to the end of your level two, um, your second year, basically, of training. Um, how have you found the, the past year or how have you found your training over the last year whenever everything was in lockdown? Were you able to continue on with your training and, and what sort of stage is your, your evidence portfolio at? Yes, good, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Sam, as Stephen said. Uh, I'm working at Belfast already. So overall, my um, experience with TTS has been very positive. Um, one thing I would say is settling in was quite easy because class sizes are smaller than school. Um, with lockdown, we've used Zoom calls and been up at TTS when we can. So Zoom calls have been more um, sort of theory based and then in TTS has been practical based, hands on stuff. So that's been really positive. I wouldn't say it's um, particularly impacted my learning in any way. Um, as for my e-portfolio, I'm at 90%. So just, just the final stretch there to finish it up. Um, and I'm hoping to have that done in two more blocks time and move on to level three. So any questions, let me know. That's Thank brilliant, you. Sam. Thank you very much. Uh, finally, uh, as one of our own staff, uh, Robert Dagnan is our careers development officer. And it's, it's Robert's role to support you whilst you're looking for employment and whilst you're applying to get onto the program. Uh, so Robert, maybe you would want to give the audience a, a, an overview of what your role is. And then I'm gonna hand straight over to you. Uh, and if you would then show the, uh, the virtual tour and then go into your presentation just straight after what you've said then, please. Great, thanks Stephen. Good evening folks. Great to be here. I'm Robert Degnan. I'm the Careers Development Officer at TTS and I've been in the role for just over three years now. It's my job primarily to deal with the applicants, the young people who apply for apprenticeships, engage with the employers, and as the weeks and months pass on, I have a bank of app good applicants, well-motivated, job ready, and I also have vacancies on the employer side of it, and it's my job to try to marry those two together and uh, get young people started in an apprenticeship and in a marriage that hopefully lasts three years and beyond, as all good marriages do. Um, so, yeah, welcome everyone. And I'll just start off with a virtual tour, which will give you an idea about what we do here at TTS. I'm the train director here at Transport Training Services. We're based at Nuts Corner in Crumlin in County Antrim. I want to take you on a tour of our building, but first of all, I want to tell you a few things about Transport Training Services. We're the largest training provider of apprenticeships in automotive training within Northern Ireland. And that includes everything from heavy vehicle to light vehicle. That includes parts and service advisors, and includes body repair and painting. Let me take you on a tour of our building and let you see our state-of-the-art facilities. Come with me. So this is our light vehicle workshop. In here you'll learn how to strip engines, 
fix gearboxes, do all sorts of tasks that you would associate with fixing a car like one of these behind me. In this workshop you'll find that there's smoke analysers, and that's a very common thing that you'll find at an MOT centre, so we need to be able to train you up as to how that's used. You'll find a very modern uh, wheel balancing and tyre fitting machine. The tyres are the, the most important safety feature that hits the road. It's the only thing that hits the road when you're driving a car. So we need to make sure that you're trained how to use them safely. In this workshop, it's a real buzz most days. You'll be in here with the rest of your class and your trainer. Um, you'll have tasks to do, but it's done in a, in a friendly and a, a welcoming environment. You'll find that the trainers are here to support you. They're here to help you learn your career. And that's, that's at the heart of TTS, but it's a real buzz. You'll love it. The skills you'll learn here at TTS will be directly transferable to the skills that you'll be using in the workplace. You'll be using the same tools, you'll be using the same techniques, you'll be using the same data. That technical data is important to you, so we teach you everything here from the ground up. And this is one of our computer suites. Uh, we have two computer suites in the, in the campus, and this is where you'll spend a lot of time uploading evidence to your electronic portfolio. We also be doing research. Uh, the computers are state of the art. We only got them put in last year, and uh, you'll spend a lot of time in here with your with your classmates. This is one of our theory rooms, and in here you'll learn everything theoretically about engines, about gearboxes, and how they work. So now we're here in the electric and hybrid vehicle training room. You'll see that it's a, a workshop and theory room all together, but this is state of the art. This is what you'll be working on for the next 20 to 30 years in your career. It's electric and hybrid vehicle training in here, and that's something that we pride ourselves on. We keep our trainers up to date with their skills so that they can train you with the latest technology. So we've shown you two of our three workshops. I'm going to show you into our last one, which is heavy vehicle repair and body repair. This is where you'll learn all your skills about repairing lorries and, and heavy vehicle vans. But more importantly, you'll learn new technology like what's behind me here. This is an air brake rig. So we can train you how the air brakes work on a lorry without ha actually having to get underneath one. Uh, this is much easier. Now we're in the spray booth. This is the oven. And this is the type of work that you'll do in here if you're on a body repair and spraying course. The body repair technicians fix the dents in the panels and the sprayers finish it off. So we're at the end of the tour now. Hopefully you've seen that we've got state-of-the-art facilities, but we've got great opportunities for you here. You've got great tutors, you'll have great classmates, and you'll have great career progression. So call our careers development officer now to book your space, and hopefully we'll see you here enrolled in September. Okay, folks, so sorry for the short delay there, but straight on to the presentation about careers in the transport and automotive industry, which is why you're all here to listen about the exciting opportunities that these can offer. First of all, a little bit about TTS. So TTS has been here along with its predecessor, Road Transport Industry Training Board. We've been delivering training for more than 50 years at Nuts Corner, and we've been running apprenticeship programs for young people here since the 1990s. We currently have around 80, 180 apprentices currently training here, and that makes us the largest single provider of apprenticeships to the automotive and transport sector sectors in Northern Ireland. So what do we mean by transport? Well, everything that comes in to and goes out of Northern Ireland travels by road. So the career opportunities are vast and diverse. The road transport industry employs two and a half million people in the UK and contributes 124 billion pounds to the UK economy. And what do we mean by automotive? Well, due to the highly rural nature of many parts of Northern Ireland, 
Transport by car is really, for many people, the only viable option for travel and commuting. So without the motor sector, we wouldn't have the cars that are safe and legal to drive. And the car industry employs 823,000 people and contributes 18.6 billion people to the UK economy. So you can, this gives you an idea of the scale of what we're talking about here by transport and automotive. So why should you consider a career in transport and automotive? Well, there are a few reasons for that. We, first of all, we have an aging workforce. Uh, there's been a historical lack of investment in apprenticeships. There's a lack of diversity. And also the impact of Brexit means that the transport and aut automotive sectors are facing huge skills shortages. This is a message that I'm hearing clearly from employers now that there, there is and there are going to be huge shortages of skills in these areas. So right now there's a high demand for new talent and I believe this is the ideal time to start a career in these sectors. You'll also recall how transport personnel were classed as key workers during the ongoing pan COVID-19 pandemic. Their work was essential, so no matter what the world throws at us, people working in these sectors will always be needed, and this gives us job security, so that's another good reason. An industry, an industry that there'll always be jobs in. We'll always have to move goods from A to B, particularly in Northern Ireland, from food to building materials to clothes to electrical goods and much more. And when it comes to things like in the future, autonomous driving and deliveries by drones, and these aren't that far away, we're still going to need traffic planners, drivers, pilots, technicians, warehouse operatives, or maintenance engineers to manage the robots that will be doing the manual work of the future. So what is the future of transport and automotive? Well, truck and car technology, as you probably know, is primarily still based on traditional diesel or petrol engines, but all that's going to change massively over the next 10 to 15 years. The UK set to ban sales of all zero, all non-zero emission cars by 2030. And this is already driving real change towards cleaner engines. In 2010, one in 10, in, tw in 2020, one in 10 cars were either fully electric or plug-in hybrids. In the transport sector, we're already seeing alternative fuels such as hydrogen cell and biogas being used to power both truck and buses. And within this same time frame, the connected nature of vehicles will have also accelerated. Already today, trucks can be diagnosed remotely or at least using a computer in a workshop. There'll be less and less getting underneath a truck or underneath a car or going down into a pit to look at a vehicle, you'd be using more and more tablets and even other newer technology to inspect and repair vehicles. With it, so first of all, let's talk a wee bit about busting the stereotypes and misconceptions. The first misconception is that driving trucks is heavy work. Well, with advances in technology and vehicles, brute strength is no longer required for driving or fixing trucks and buses. And driving trucks and buses is becoming more and more automated. So the days of using muscle to turn a steering wheel on a heavy vehicle are long gone. Today's drivers are very much highly skilled people. With fuel being a transport operator's second biggest cost after labor cost, fuel performance is also critical. Drivers are trained and skilled in driving safely and efficiently with onboard technology that can be monitored on harsh braking, engine idling, cruise control usage, etc. And the second stereotype or misconception that we can challenge here is that being a technician is dirty work. These are some pictures of our technicians. These are actual TTS apprentices at work in their workplace. And these days, fixing trucks and cars is all about technology. The changes in engine technology and the introduction of alternative fuels means that traditional diesel mechanics is moving more and more towards diagnostic engineers. Automotive technology is all about solving problems as much as it is about the actual fixing. 
And much of the problem solving these days is done by computer-based diagnostics. It is, of course, part of the job to get your hands dirty. That's still the case. But today we call professionals that work on vehicles technicians rather than mechanics. Likewise, engines are moving away from petrol and diesel to electric and other fuel types, which are much cleaner to deal with. We can't promise that you won't ever get your hands dirty. That's why you have overalls and PPE. But the job is clearly getting less and less dirty as technology involves. If you compare being a vehicle technician to other vocational career choices, it's really not much different to being a hairdresser who gets stained with hair dye, a builder getting his hands dirty with cement, or a doctor or nurse getting bodily fluids on their hands, or chefs getting covered in food. And the third stereotype that we can challenge here is that transport and automotive careers are only for men. Well, although transport, logistics and automotive are traditionally male dominated, that's true. There's no reason why this needs to be the case going into the future. Our existing and past female apprentices and the women that work in the transport and automotive sectors tell us that they're not treated any differently from their male colleagues and that there's nothing that their male colleagues can do that they can't. They consistently tell us that they enjoy being part of the team. They're treated fairly and equally and that they love the banter when it comes to being part of a mixed male-female team. If you look at the bottom of the slide, you see that TTS recently started a Women in Wheels Facebook, Facebook group to encourage more females to consider careers in transport and automotive. And this group already has 198 members as of today, and it's only been going a few weeks. And I just want to show you a short video to, to show you a little bit about careers in the uh, automotive and transport for females. So just bear with me. Logistics and transport is a great industry to work in because of the variety, the career opportunities and the global marketplace that is logistics and transport and you can work anywhere. I just love my job so much. It's something I've always been really passionate about and I know that I've always wanted to do it in life. Um, I love being hands-on, thinking, solving problems and then obviously because I just love cars and like working on them, it's sort of more like a passion than a career to me. I definitely think more girls should think of it as a career. I would definitely say you don't need to be physically strong to do the job. Everyone has a method that works for them. There's so many opportunities to progress in the transport in industry. I would hopefully like to be working still in the trade and um, possibly going on to be a workshop controller. The best thing to be a truck driver is the fact that you can drive this large vehicle, you're on the road and you look down and there's people in the cars and they're like, oh, look, look what she can drive. Um, you're on the open road, you have this freedom. If you're a young girl sitting at home thinking what you want to do with life, I recommend driving. Um, there's so much opportunity. Um, you'll feel like you've achieved something. So at the age of 19, I've hit my dream job. Like I've, not many people can say that this age. I go in every day, I'm excited to get up and go in and ready for the day. I really enjoy the, the variety of things. Definitely think being a paint technician is, is sort of the girls. Um, at the end of the day, uh, boys are more likely to be red, green, colour blind than us. And um, I think a female's natural attention to detail is a lot higher than a male's. So I think that just puts us in the right sort of frame for the job. I definitely like to see more females in the industry to make it more sort of balanced. The great thing about working in the industry is um, 
you get to work with new people every day, you get to meet new customers every day, um, and it's just, just new experiences. I'm, I'm learning something new every, every day, really. So working in the maid sector it is very fast paced, but it's kind of like, it is sort of a relaxed environment as well. Um, so you, don't, you never feel like you're under pressure. In the future, I can definitely see myself in this industry still. There's no women bring the same skill sets as men. There's nothing um, in this day and age that uh, women can't do that men can do. If you're thinking about this in the industry, what is stopping you? Absolutely nothing is stopping you. There's an abundance of career opportunities. There's an abundance of current vacancies within the sector. We, we need you. We want you. Come and join us. Um, there, there's, there is lots of females in the offices, just unfortunately don't see enough out in the road, but there's definitely a place for you here. We'd love to have Okay, folks, just carry on then. Uh, hopefully some of the get our guests tonight uh, will have been inspired by that. Some of our females looking in tonight will have been inspired by that video. So just go on now to look at some of the roles available in transport and automotive. And you can see from that slide that there are a vast array of roles in the industry from customer service people to drivers to fleet managers, then of course the, the back of office human resources, IT and marketing, through to parts and service advisors, and then the technician roles, as well as the transport planners and managers. So a really huge variety of roles within the industry. And that's why it's such an exciting industry to be in. Uh, and then the apprenticeships that we offer at transport training services, well, by far the two most popular ones are the heavy vehicle technician apprenticeship and the light vehicle technician apprenticeship. But we also offer body repair technician, vehicle refinish, which is your paint spraying, your vehicle fast fitting apprenticeship, which is mainly a fast fit working with tires, brakes, batteries, exhaust, suspension components. We also offer we're also offering a, a new traffic office and logistics apprenticeship as well as parts advisor, service advisor, and the true driving ones at the bottom, the bus and truck driving apprenticeships. So what, we have a portfolio of 10 different apprenticeships on offer here at TTS. So why should you choose TTS as an apprenticeship or why choose an apprenticeship in general? Well, with an apprenticeship, you get paid from day one. An apprenticeship is paid employment. It's not a training scheme and it's not a full-time course at college. It's paid employment with the opportunity to get qualifications. So it's essentially earn as you learn with a starting minimum wage in the region of 170 pounds a week. And because you're already employed, you won't have to look for a job at the end of your training. If you've performed well during your apprenticeship, your employer will not want to let you go at the end of it when you're qualified. Most of our apprenticeship qualifications are recognized around the world, meaning you will, won't be restricted to working in the UK in the future. We have ex-apprentices working in other parts of the UK, in Ireland, and as far away as Australia. Training at TTS is a unique blend of workshop, classroom, and e-learning, with a minimum of 50% hands-on training in the workshop. You will attend TTS approximately one week every two months for training. Both TTS and our partner employers find this block release model to be hugely beneficial com compared to the traditional day release system, because you can get more done in five consecutive days than in five individual days. In our experience, employers also pr prefer the block release model because they find it easier to plan your workload as an apprentice. So what about the road ahead after you qualify? Well, after apprenticeship, you could, if you were on a technician apprenticeship, you could move on to, obviously, you're a qualified technician at the end of your apprenticeship. And after a few years of experience as a technician, you would then be looking at possibly a, a workshop controller or a master technician and going on to be a workshop foreman. And then in later years, on to management roles within the industry, such as service manager or even taking a sideways step into vehicle sales.
but there's plenty of different careers paths within the industry. And on the transport side of it, as a driver, once you complete your apprenticeship and work as a truck driver, there are many other roles within driving for that. Uh, going on maybe to be a driver trainer or a transport planner and eventually a transport manager. So again, a great variety of roles on the transport side. Final video for you, and I'd like you to listen to what some of our current apprentices are saying about their experience on the apprenticeship program at TTS and with their employer. Services is a social enterprise. We're owned by a parent charity, but we're the largest training provider of apprenticeship training in Northern Ireland for the automotive and transport sector. Uh, we have in the region of 185 apprentices at the moment. Apprentices should, should come to TTS because we have a variety of training that suits most young people. They will get a, a good all-round experience. Over time, they build up that competence so that they can work on a vehicle, whether it's a light vehicle or a heavy vehicle, and they know that they're doing the job right. And that's because of the training we get here at TTS. I chose TTS because it offers more in-depth training and more realistic training to the type of manufacturer's training that we'd be offered. It's always had good reviews and it's the, the choice of my company as well. Anyone starting this apprenticeship should expect a lot of challenges along the way and a lot of new learning opportunities. There's lots of things to learn every day is a new, a new chapter, so it's, it's full of excitement. Doing this apprenticeship has been the best thing I've ever done. I thought TTS was going to be like school, but it's not like school at all. You have a lot more freedom and get treated like an adult. You don't get treated like a, like a child in school. For me, TTS had the best setup. We're in work for seven weeks and then we have a full block week of tech and their facilities were brilliant compared to any of the other techs I've been to or seen. The best thing about being a TTS apprentice is smaller classes you can be more one-on-one -on -one with the teacher this is not as many people in the class and i love coming up here like all the students and all the teachers are good crack like so it's not too strict you want to learn everything and you're not going to be rushed into learning anything throughout the week here at tts and um, some of the days we're in the workshop here doing practical work and then other times we're in the classroom learning this apprenticeship is probably best suited to someone who just wants to and work hands on and have a good time running as well. TTS plant is very good. Everyone tries to help me as best they can um, to get through my assignments and to be able to get me to the next step where I want to be. Um, to say everyone I came across in regards to TTS has been superb. It's a great way to start off. Um, everyone knows that you're learning. You can you can get your way to the top and um, nice and simple, so it's good. Best suited to someone who has the drive to be uh, the best drive to be where they want to be at the top, obviously. So you start at the bottom and everyone's there to help you to get, get towards the top. And that's probably the, the best aspiration to have. Uh, most people go to university and come out with big bills, uh, but we get paid as we learn, so it's it's certainly a big bonus. I feel like I'm being prepared to go out full time as a mechanic. I feel like this course is definitely necessary because it gives me my qualifications. You should expect uh, coming to TTS that uh, you'll learn more than just uh, the motor trade. You'll, you'll learn about uh, keeping keeping your work area tidy, keeping um, good work uh, work relationships with the, the other people that you're working with. TTS is very uh, hands-on, very um, equal learning, and uh, the small groups does help. I've always had an interest in the automotive industry, and I thought the best way to get into it would be through an apprenticeship because you get to learn and train at the same time and you, get, you just get to start out from scratch and get to learn the processes. The apprenticeship is best suited to someone who, you know, if you like outgoing, you like to be involved in customers, you like being you know, in front of the house. I'm really glad that I took my apprenticeship to TTS because I have learnt loads um, as well as having fun in it and 
that she was great to work with, so I, I just really enjoyed going up there. TTS is a wonderful place, a lot of wonderful people, very helpful. You tell them what you want to do, how you want to do it, and they do it all tailored to how you like it. TTS is magic. The transport and motor sector is a very exciting sector to be in. There are all these jobs and the jobs are there, they're in demand and at the end of an apprenticeship programme, the apprentices move into employment straight away. To become a fully qualified vehicle technician, whether it's in light vehicle, in heavy vehicle or in the body repair end of it, an apprenticeship is the way to do it by getting professional qualifications through the Institute of Motor Industry. Uh, and those qualifications will stay with you for life as you move through your career and move upwards in the, in the sector. Okay, Stephen. Um, folks, thanks for bearing with us during that presentation and the video content as well. Hopefully that's given you a flavor of what TTS are about and what apprenticeships are about, but now is a chance for you to ask some questions. So I'm going to hand over to Stephen, who's going to uh, field the questions initially. Okay, thanks, Robert. Um, hopefully you can all hear me. Um, Right, we've had a couple of questions that have come in whilst we were uh, live, so I'll, I'll just address those first. The other questions that have come in um, prior to the meeting, uh, we'll, we'll come to those in a wee second or two. So uh, first came in from an, an anonymous attendee. It says, as a female who worked in maintenance management in a transport company, the information I'm looking for is general uh, information course on maintenance of a truck. Uh, the six week checks and breakdown problems. Uh, so I'm more equipped with uh, the skills to deal with those maintenance calls. Um, okay, uh, I, I'll field that one myself. Uh, we have a number of different courses and uh, what, what we'll do, if, if you make contact with us after the meeting, uh, just email myself at Stephen W, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-W at transporttraining.org and I'll, uh, I'll be able to put you in contact with our trainer who would be able to uh, talk you through what you need. Um, so I will, uh, I'll type up our email address there for you. And hopefully you'll be able to see that in one wee second. There you go. Okay, so then our, our next question from another anonymous attendee I don't have a license yet, but plan to get one. Uh, she gave, this person gave it up years ago when they were having kids. Um, driving licenses, uh, the, we do a driver training apprenticeship in both light vehicle, sorry, heavy vehicle and bus. And you'll learn everything. If you're, if you're doing the, the, the lorry training, um, you'll learn everything from load planning to route planning. Uh, vehicle safety and all, all that sort of stuff. So it's not just learning to drive the vehicle, it's, it's the whole package. Um, so what we need to do is uh, get you involved with our application process. So again, I'll, I'll type up a wee information session there to you and uh, give you the details. Question coming in from Kareem. Uh, Hello, I'm looking for an employer. I want to register for the Motor Vehicle Apprenticeship Program and needs I need an employer. He's tried visiting uh, a few garages, a couple of garages in the Belfast area and given in his CV, but hasn't had any success yet. Uh, Kareem says that I need some advice and some tips. And I, I already have met with Robert and he was very kind and helpful. I'm doing my level two in English and will start my maths afterwards. So Robert, um, any tips there for Kareem? Okay, Stephen, yeah. Um... 
Stephen Kareem's been up to TTS. He's passed his aptitude test. He's a well-motivated young man. And him and I have been in touch since. We were speaking late last week, Thursday or Friday. Maybe he has used his initiative and tried a few garages in his area. Hasn't got any positive leads yet, but him and I are going to stay in close contact with each other over the next number of weeks and months as he works towards getting his English level two. Um, we're just waiting for some of the bigger dealerships to open up their vacancies in, in and around Malusk, Belfast area, and hopefully I'll be able to uh, direct Kareem towards those as the, as the months go on. Okay, fantastic, Robert. Thank you. No, no big panic yet. We're kind of only in April now, and we still have four months before uh, the apprenticeships will be starting here, at least four. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, Sam, here's a question for you. Uh, if you want to take yourself off mute, this yes. is coming in from Ebony. Sam, um, how have you found working alongside other apprentices like Chloe and Ben? And uh, do you find it more difficult as they are also learning? Um, well, I'm in Belfast Audi, which is quite a big dealership. So we have 30 technicians there and there's about seven or eight apprentices. Um, so I wouldn't say it's more difficult to learn with other apprentices there. You sort of bounce off each other. Um, and with guys being higher level there, I always have people to go to who have been through the same experience I'm going through at the minute. Um, so I'd say having other apprentices there is actually a very positive um, thing for my learning. So hopefully that covers off your question. That's excellent. Thank you, Sam. Right, I'm going to turn to some of the questions that have come in um, over the over the past week or so. Uh, Robert, I'll field this one to yourself. This came in from Hazel, who's a parent, and she says, what qualifications are needed to join a TTS apprenticeship? Okay, well, Hazel, you probably noticed from her website that we don't actually specify a minimum number of qualifications, but what I would say is to you is that it's important to come with reasonable GCSE grades especially in maths and English, it, it'll make it easier for us to promote you to an employer, to promote your son or daughter to an employer if they have already achieved uh, passes in English at maths at grade C or above. For those young people who are yet to take GCSEs and are waiting for grades, uh, we would have a good idea of your strengths and weaknesses in English and maths through our aptitude test. And when you come for your aptitude test, that gives us an idea of what you're likely to get in your maths and English. But basically employers would be looking for four or five decent GCSEs. The problem is when you, don't, when you haven't got your English and maths, then you have to come up and repeat those at TTS um, through essential skills. And employers don't really like paying someone to come up here and pass. Uh, set classes that they should have passed at school. That's the bottom line. So it's much easier for us to try to connect you with an employment opportunity if you've got maths and English under your belt or at least one of them. Okay, thanks, Robert. I, I think it's a good time to be asking those sorts of questions because obviously we still have a month or so left of school and young folk can put that effort in whilst they're still at school to get those maths and English grades up to the grade C if that's a possibility for them. Um, okay, second question has come in, and Robert, I'm going to field this one out to yourself as, again. It's uh, come in from Lorcan and Karim again. Uh, just how do I find an employer to take me on as an apprentice? Um, I think you've covered some of the tips there, so maybe if you want to just top that up a wee bit. Okay, well, Lorcan and Karim, um, some young people come to TTS and they've already an employer organised, and that's great, but a lot of young people come without an employer, and if they get through our aptitude test and appear to us to be well motivated and job ready, we would then give them every assistance we can. We're in touch with a wide range of employers across Northern Ireland from as far down as Enniskillen up to Coleraine and down to Newry. We have good connections and good partnerships and employers will tell us when their vacancies are open and we will then contact the young people that we have dealt with and have passed our aptitude test and encourage them strongly to apply for vacancies in their area. Some employers have their own application process, so it's up to the young person once we've identified the vacancy to them to follow that application process. Other employers simply want us to send CVs to them of, of young people that we have deemed to be suitable. And uh, 
So it's still a little bit early in the year. We're only coming out of the coronavirus pandemic and employers are cautious about opening up vacancies right now and understandably so. But I'm optimistic that in the coming months that we'll have a lot more apprenticeship vacancies coming on stream. There are already good vacancies in the heavy vehicle industry and I'd be keen to see more applicants uh, coming for heavy vehicle because I have vacancies that I'm keen to fill for heavy vehicle repair and maintenance. Okay, that's brilliant, Robert. Uh, one one more thing I want to pick up on there, just um, you, you've referred a few times to young people. Um, the age brackets that we can deal with at this point in time are anybody who's in the age range of 16 to 24. Now, the Department for the Economy have a consultation out at the minute, and they're seeking to increase that age range and make it an all-age apprenticeship. So if, if you're over the age of 24, don't think that you've got barriers in front of you. Um, that is being dealt with at the minute with the Department for the Economy. And just to explain, the Department for the Economy sponsor this program through, um, through their efforts and in conjunction with the European Social Fund. So therefore, they, they've got a vested interest to try and upskill the, the, the population of Northern Ireland so we have a competitive economy. Uh, another question has come in, and I'll, I'll take this one myself. It's coming in from Aaron. A um, couple of questions in one. Aaron has asked, will I learn to weld? And will I learn how to diagnose problems in an engine? Um, okay, that depends on which course you come on to, Aaron. You will learn to weld in our body repair program, and you'll learn how to do spot welding and, and MIG welding. Uh, there, there may be terms that are familiar with you, but uh, it's, it's certainly a way that we can teach you to, to weld in our body repair program. Your other question about diagnosing engine problems, uh, that would be if you were doing a, a light vehicle or heavy vehicle course, um, vehicle maintenance and repair. So it depends on what course you come on to, what you're going to learn. But yes, certainly if you sign up for the light vehicle or the heavy vehicle maintenance and repair, you will in your level three year uh, undertake engine uh, diagnosis. So if you're, if you're finding faults. Uh, another question that I'm going to answer, and this has come in from Katrina, who is a parent. Um, what is the qualification that students will leave with um, after they finish their TTS apprenticeship? The, the apprenticeship, uh, Katrina, follows a, a, a national framework and that includes a level two in the chosen vocational area and a level three in the chosen vocational area. The framework also includes maths, English and ICT, essential skills at level two or a grade C and, G and GCSE, C or above, and GCSE gives exemptions from those. So hopefully, Katrina, that answers your question, but they definitely go out, if they've completed their full apprenticeship, they go out with a level three in the vocational area. So that could be light vehicle, heavy vehicle, uh, body repair, spraying, whichever vocational area they choose. Okay, Robert, I'm gonna feed this one to you. Folks, the rest of you on the panel, don't fall asleep, please. We do have questions for you. Um, they'll, they'll be with you. We'll be with you in a wee second or two. So Robert, this question has come in from Aaron and Nathan. How do I apply for a course at TTS and what are the stages of the application process? Okay, Aaron and Nathan, um, quite simple really. Just contact myself, either phone TTS and ask to speak to me or email me and I'll get back in touch with you. And the first thing I'll do is arrange for you to come up to the center here and sit our aptitude test. If you're under 18, you'll need to attend with a parent as part of our safeguarding policy. Uh, but you'll sit, you'll sit our aptitude test, which is four short tests in English, maths, mechanical and reasoning. And we'll also have a chat, an informal chat about where you want to go and what type of apprenticeship you want to do. And that, that'll be a chat alongside your parent. If you're under 18, with your parent but if you're over 18 you can just come alone but the first step is to get in touch with me uh, and once you've passed our aptitude test then we can start to put you in touch with employers and arrange interviews and trials for you at that stage okay that's fantastic robert thank you for that feedback to the young folk uh, a couple of other questions have come in from nathan here and i'm going to just field them together with uh, to yourself robert again uh, when do applications open for apprenticeships and what type of applicants are desired by TTS and employers? Okay, so Nathan, there's no um, 
there's no time frame when the applications open. We're open all year round for young people applying to us. Obviously, most young people start to get interested in the apprenticeships around March, April, May time when they're finishing school, and it starts to stimulate some thought among them about how to about what they're going to do after school. But we take inquiries at any time of the year. We've had a couple of young people started with us recently, one in February in the heavy in the heavy vehicle industry and one in March in a uh, body repair paint spraying apprenticeship. So we're open all the time. And then just the second part of the question was what type of applicants are desired for by TTS and employers? Well, I'll answer the first bit of that and I'll maybe uh, hand over to Darren and Billy for the second part. As far as we're concerned at TTS, young people who are interested in the trade and who have the potential to be passionate about it and who have the right attitude. Um, obviously, a young person leaving school won't have experience, but if they have the right attitude, that can take them a long way. Um, Darren, I'll maybe call upon you to add a bit to that and then we can hand over to Billy as well so it's really what type of young people are you looking for as an apprentice? Sure thank you I think it, it depends on the apprenticeship program um, throughout all of the, the programs whether it's technical or whether it's service advisor I guess the first thing for us will be we will always hire for attitude and then we'll train the skill the skills easy bit that we can add the attitude for, for us is probably the most important bit so we want to know have you a genuine interest in our industry? Not asking you necessarily to be a petrol head, as it were, but just a genuine interest to interact with our customers and a genuine interest in, in our vehicles if it's if it's technical that you're after. Um, we, we'd be keen that, that someone comes and demonstrates why they want to work for the group. Again, remember when you're applying for this, these rules tend to be very popular. Um, we may be looking for, uh, you know, as an example, maybe 10 applicants uh, sorry, sorry, 10, 10 point to people to a point, but we'll have 100 application forms to sift through. Um, and they'll all be of a similar background in terms of experience. So you've got to demonstrate to us a bit about what it is that you want to work for, why, what, what reasons you want to work in the trade and what you'll bring to, to, to our business for us. Um, that, that's certainly at the short listing stage. At the interview stage, I would say, talk about what experiences you have. So you may not have a whole lot of work experience, but you will have lots of experiences that we'll be keen to, 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 to uh, garnish from you. So tell us about what you understand of customer service. You may not have worked a whole lot, but you'll certainly have experienced poor customer service and good customer service. And you'll understand the difference in between both of those and how that impacts our business. So we'd be keen that you talk to us about that, that type of stuff. Don't necessarily think that you have to be, a, a, as I say, a... Uh, what sometimes people say, well, I'm not really, I have a keen interest in cars, but I'm not a petrol head. That's not really what we're after. We can give you all the technical skills. Great. Darren, thank you. And Billy, what about from the heavy vehicle perspective? What type of young people do you look for and what type of attributes? Right. Really, your, yourself and Darren have said most of it, but I go over it. We want someone who's enthusiastic someone who this is what they want to do and they're enthusiastic about it we want them to be flexible so we do they need to have flexibility we work long hours to keep the commercial vehicles on the road we need the flexibility built in so we do good timekeeping we find some young people coming to us that they seem to have a problem getting in early in the morning and it's very important they get in early in the morning to start their work Importantly, they must choose the right thing, it's especially some of them get mixed up between the car and the, and the heavy trade. Um, the car guys, you know, are specific to the car, very little changeover. We need them to be specific. They want the want HGV. It's not as heavy as it was, Robert. Uh, a lot of laptop work, a lot of people sitting in cabs nowadays, but it is a wee bit different. So the, they must be specific on what they want. And the one thing I would say, it's what do you do after what you're paid to do that makes the difference, mm -hmm. if, if they understand that. And we love enthusiastic guys that just want to be there. They, they don't have to be patrol heads, but they want to learn. They're enthusiastic. And between yourselves and us, we can put the rest of those skills into them and support them. They'll not always be at the tools, perhaps. Our trade's very diverse. And some of the best 
uh, advisors. They come from the tools. They understand how the car works, the lorry works, and they can actually make very good service advisors. So, sorry for going on about it, but that's where I would see it. Absolutely not, Billy. I was speaking to a former apprentice of ours who just finished up about a year ago, and he's come off the tools, and he's now working as a service advisor um, and loving every minute of it. So, good example, just speaking to him there before five o'clock. But thank you, guys, and I'll hand back to Stephen now. Thank you, folks. Uh, th this one, I'm going to feel to both uh, Sam and Caroline. Caroline, if you could maybe answer first. Um, Nathan asks the question, I'd like to hear the experiences of individuals currently undertaking apprenticeships. So, Caroline, tell us what your typical day is like in the workplace and then uh, also in here. So, typical day for me in the workplace, um, I currently am working nine to half five shifts. Um, I was working eight to half four, but it just changed. It's all good. Um, but we tend to come in on a Monday morning. Certainly for me, I try to do a bit of a clean up. Um, do empty some of the bins and maybe rush up the ramp and stuff like that just before I go to get any vehicles in. Um, it depends if I haven't had the chance to do that on the Friday, that's what I'll do on a Monday. Um, certainly then I would go to my manager and I'll see if there's any jobs in for me. If not, is there anything needing done? Does the scrap metal bin need emptied? Stuff like that. Um, certainly in TTS, it's very different. Uh, TTS, obviously, you're in the classroom, but you're not always going to be in the classroom. Sometimes you're in the classroom for maybe an hour in the morning, and then you have your tea break, and then you'll go down into the computer rooms for a bit, um, or you might go down into the workshop, workshop for a bit. It all just depends on what we're doing at the time of that of, of the week. Okay, that's excellent. Thank you. And Sam, from your perspective, um, What's work like? You know, what type of jobs do you get to do as a second year apprentice? Um, yeah, so with my extra experience, um, I'm starting to do slightly bigger jobs. So stuff such as timing belts, um, basic diagnostics. Um, as a first year, obviously you start at the bottom. So you're starting to do services, more routine maintenance, such as changing brakes. Um, and you'll also be paired up with a journeyman. So you'll be assigned one of the more senior technicians and he'll talk you through sort of all your paperwork, um, all the aspects of kind of like health checks, anything like that, as well as kind of um, warranty repairs. Um, as well as this, you'd be looking to sort of collect job cards throughout the day as well for tech. So. Um, as part of your work-based evidence, you need to collect certain job cards for tech um, and then upload them when you get into TTS. But uh, overall, I'm really enjoying my experience so far as an apprentice. Um, and I'm looking forward to moving on to level three in a few months. So very positive so far. Okay, that's brilliant, Sam. Thank you very much. Um, Billy and Darren, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this next question to yourselves. Um, Nathan is asking about um, the, the career progression routes. Once a young person comes into an apprenticeship, uh, what I know Robert covered uh, sort of the road ahead as, as to what the progression routes might be in the presentation. But if, if you look at a, a young person who comes in through the door, totally, totally inexperienced, and we've, we've put them through a three-year apprenticeship, what are their uh, what are their prospects after that apprenticeship? Basically, if we start with yourself, Darren. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, um, I, I guess for, for us, it, it's a vast range of things that, that happen. We tend to have probably about eighty percent of our apprentices who, after for qualification, stay with us and stay in a technical role. If we're talking about motor vehicle technicians. Um, the 20% of those that, that, that don't stay in role, uh, we have some who've progressed to service advisors, um, and we have had some in the last three years who've actually progressed to service managers. Mm -hmm. um, when I look at the apprentice service advisor scheme, so I set away from the workshop side of things, again, we've had people come out of service advisor 
um, and now are, are, are fully fledged service advisors, as in accredited by their brand. Um, so that's been really positive for us. Um, but but like your slide said earlier, really the, the possibilities are in this one. Once you know a bit about a vehicle, it does help for things like workshop control, workshop management, um, some of our supervisory roles, and even then, if you want to stay in that field, um, we've got lots of master techs who've come from a, an apprentice background and, and, and progressed that that way and again stayed within brand. Um, for me, the really interesting thing is they, they, a lot of the master techs and senior techs tell me that that's where their apprenticeship has stood them well because they're, they're continually learning what they had to do in their three or four years of their apprenticeship. Actually, they've had to continue to do it with the brand to be a senior or master technician. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, Darren, because, um, you know, once once a young person finishes their their apprenticeship training, it's really just the tip of the iceberg, isn't it? You know, there's so much there's so much width to to the actual trade. And Billy, you'll be finding that as well. You know, as 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 technology develops, you know, we're, we're being asked more and more to look at, you know, the new technology that's built into a heavy vehicle or a light vehicle, things like um ADAS, your your assistance, your driver assistance technology, you know, as lane departure and stuff like that. So, once an apprentice finishes with yourself, do they do do they do any further training, or is it all in house with yourselves there, Billy? No, once an, an apprentice is only it's only to start for them. Once they finish the apprenticeship, uh, it's continual learning, and our trade at the moment is moving that fast. The technology on vehicles is, is evolving very, very fast. We're fully autonomous vehicles, not that far away, I feel. The power sources we're going to be using uh, is unbelievable. So it's changing very quick. Um, good people are hard to come by. Once an apprentice is trained with us, some will be master technicians. Some will find it's not for them. They'll move into other areas of the business and it's the beauty of our business. There is other areas like Darren has said, service advisor. Maybe want to move on to be a foreman in our industry. We still have four men at workshops, service management. Um, you can own your own business. I started off as an apprentice technician, moved my way on up, become the foreman, the service manager, after sales manager. And I would like to pass that on to young people. You know, it's whatever you want it to be. If you want to work hard and get the training and be supported uh, and move on, it's all there for you. It's up to you to pick what you want, exploit it, and get on with it. That's it. I suppose it, it all comes down to where on that ladder you wish to get off at. You know, if the ladder continues on up, why not? Why not? You know, our our chief executive started off as a as a as a an apprentice in the heavy vehicle end of things. And now he's the chief executive of an organization that trains over 180 apprentices. So uh, why not? Why not? That's what I would say. Um, okay, a couple more FAQs that uh, we're going to sort of field to Caroline and Sam. Um, how often, Sam, I'll put, pitch this to yourself first. How often will you attend TTS for training? And what do you generally do here? Um, if you, if you look at a, a, a typical training week, I want you to bear in mind how things have, have changed over the uh, pandemic with COVID and everything like that. So for every eight weeks, I'm in TTS for a one-week block. And when I'm in TTS, it's roughly about 50% practical and then 50% um, classroom theory-based. Mm -hmm. So being the workshop, for example, my last block was working on engines. So we stripped an engine, um, replaced injectors, all, all that type of stuff. Yeah. And then we're in the classroom uh, learning about it. Um, I do enjoy going up to TTS. It definitely breaks up the routine of work. And it's nice to go up and see my classmates every so often. Um, I'm in there 9 to 4, Monday to Thursday, and then 9 to 3 on Friday, which is quite nice as well. Um, as for the pandemic affecting things, um, again, we've been using Zoom calls where necessary. My last um, last block there was up in TTS all week, but previous blocks we've been uh, at home on Zoom for the full week and then catching up on the practical stuff um, when we can. 
Fantastic, Sam. Thank you. And Caroline, I'm, I'm going to pitch it slightly differently to yourself. So the question was, how, how often will I be at TTS and, and what will I do when I'm there? I want to pitch it to yourself, really, as to the type of support that you get when you're here with your, with your trainer. Um, so Michael, who is my trainer, he is brilliant. Um, he's very much if you have a problem in your workplace or if you're not getting the jobs that you need for your workplace, he's very good in letting us know exactly what it is we still need to get for our, um, uh, what's the word? For our- Portfolio. Portfolio, that's the word. <laughs> um, you know, and he, cause he's able to access our portfolios exactly. So he's, ex he can tell us you still need to have a steering job or, you know, an engine management job. It all just depends. Um, but certainly Michael's been brilliant and Robert as well is very good with his pastoral, pastoral sort of side of things. And um, he takes us all aside every week and certainly during the lockdown last year, he called me a couple of times as well to see how I was getting on. Was I back to work yet? And stuff like that. So it really is very good in that way. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, that's a good that's a good report on Robert. I'll, uh, I'll mark that up whenever I'm doing his appraisal next time. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you very much, folks. A uh, couple more questions, just if I, if I pitch these ones to myself. So how many people will be in your class? Um, we generally have classes in the range of uh, eight to 12. 12 is the absolute maximum, but we try to pitch in around eight to eight to 10 people because you'll get a much more one-to-one uh, -one attention from your, your trainer whenever you're, you're there. And you'll get that level of support that Caroline was speaking about there. Um, will it cost me anything? Uh, as an apprentice, no, you'll not need to dip into your pocket for anything at all. Your training materials are provided for you here at TTS. It's your employer's responsibility to provide you with your PPE, all your personal protective equipment. Um, so you shouldn't need to dip into your pocket for anything. Um, the next question that I'm pitching to myself is, uh, how much will I be paid? Now, that all depends on you, okay? The least that you can be paid is the national minimum wage. And that applies to all apprentices under the age of eight, under the age of 19 or if you're 19 and in the first year of your apprenticeship uh, national minimum wage at the minute is four pounds 30 per hour so as robert said earlier if you work that out it's, a, it's approximately 170 pounds a week if you work a 40 hour week um, as far as as far as far as the getting higher than that well that's up to you as a as an apprentice if you're proving to your employer that you're worth more um, don't be expecting anything higher than that really in your first year, but in the second and third years of your apprenticeship, that depends on how much effort you put into your, your working day. Um, you know, the, there are apprentices who will do the bare minimum and they'll get paid the bare minimum. There are apprentices who will go that extra mile, push the boundaries that bit more, ask for jobs that are being uh, scheduled for, for them. And those apprentices will get that bit more. Okay, so uh, how much will you be paid? That depends on you, but the minimum that you can be, you can be paid is £4.30 per hour under these new rules uh, for the national minimum wage. Robert, uh, I'm going to pitch this question to yourself, and we've literally got three more questions to go, folks. Uh, this one to Robert, and then the next couple to Robert, and then Billy and, and Darren as well. Robert, from an employer's point of view, from an employer's perspective, what will it cost to hire an apprentice? Stephen, absolutely nothing. If they, um, you know, if if they hire through TTS, it it, sh it won't cost them anything. And you know, the apprenticeship program itself is fully funded, so employers don't pay for any of the training. Uh, one thing the employers will get if they hire between now and thirty first of March next year, they will receive a three thousand pounds financial incentive from the government. They'll get 2,000 after 90 days of the apprentice being in employment and a further 1,000 after 200 days. And at the very end of the three years, when the certificates are claimed by TTS, the employer will get a further 1,500. Uh, it's called an employer incentive bonus, and that 
helps to offset some of the training costs. So there's definitely a good incentive for employers to recruit apprentices at this stage. That's excellent. Um, and it's, it's an important thing, you know, because the government are trying to build the economy. So that employer incentive scheme uh, really does offset some of the costs of taking on an apprentice. Uh, if you if you look at their wages and everything like that, and and how much time you have to devote um, to training them. Uh, just a question has popped in here from Josh Marshall. Uh, what will happen if I do not have an employer by September? Maybe you could answer that one, Robert. Well, Josh, hopefully it won't happen that you won't have an employer by September, but the, at, at times there are a small number of apprentices. We can't help every applicant. Uh, sometimes there are just more applicants than there are vacancies. But you can join the programme later in the year, in October, November time. Um, some young people take a gap year and they go and take a job in retail or in another sector and they reapply again the following year when they're maybe a bit more motivated, a bit more mature and with a bit more work experience under their belt. Or they might go back and repeat their English and maths at, at a night class if they haven't got their English and maths and that will make them a more attractive prospect the following year. So hopefully Josh will be able to help you this year, but if we can't, it's not the end of the road. You can join an apprenticeship program right up to your 25. And some people have to take two bites at the cherry before they, before they make it into TTS with an employer. Okay, that's great, Robert. Thank you. Um, the, question, the question that I, I want to come to now is, uh, Robert, if you answer this and then we'll, we'll get a perspective from Billy and Darren as well. Um, do you help me find suitable candidates? So I think you've, you've, you've answered that in, in the question that you've responded to for Josh. Um, so what kind of help can we give a, a young person, Robert? In terms of finding a job? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, well Stephen, specific... The, the uh, brokerage service? Yeah, Stephen, I mean, we have a brokerage service in the... The, the applicants come to us and when we assess them as being job ready and pass the aptitude test, we then, we then know which employers are recruiting um, and we would encourage those young people to apply where the vacancies are or if the employers don't have a live vacancy, we can approach employers in the area where the young person lives. We can speculative, speculatively approach employers uh, where the young person lives and a lot of employers have heard of TTS. We have a decent reputation and employers will hopefully look favorably upon, upon an approach from us with a young, well-motivated person with a good CV. And uh, one thing we do is encourage the young people and the employers to have a trial for a week, an unpaid trial. And it's an opportunity for both the employer and the young person to see, is this, what, is this the way we want to go? So it gives the young person a week in the environment and by the end of that week, the young person's pretty much going to know whether they, whether it's the right thing for them. And an employer will know within a day or two of the young person being there whether that young person is somebody that has potential. So we are more and more encouraging employers to take the young person on a no commitment trial for one week, up to, yeah. for up to a week. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned there about a good CV. Can you help a young person to put together a good CV? Yes, Stephen, we can help them and build, build a CV and we've been doing that and there's CVs going back and forward in various draft stages. Um, and some young people come with, with great CVs already and they really just need tweaked or, or topped and tail. But other young people aren't so sure about how to put together a good CV and a lot of them undersell themselves. And it's my job to make sure that they're bringing out the best in their work experience, even if it's only been... A week, a week's work experience from school. It's, it's, it's up to them. It's up to me to, to highlight how, how good that is and what skills can be transferred from that into, into an apprenticeship. So, a, a lot of young people don't sell themselves well enough, and it's my job to help them with interview skills and CV building so that they're ready if they get a chance to go to an employer for a week. They're ready to, to take that opportunity and grasp it. Okay, that's brilliant, Robert. Thank you. Uh, Billy and Darren, from your from your perspective, um, have you any tips that you would give to a young person who's who's out there looking for employment at the minute? If we start off with Billy on that one, yes, Stephen. Um, 
a, a good way there is to contact your sales, get your sales. You have all the contacts with the employers. Mm -hmm. So you know who's looking for apprentices. You, you know us. You know us well, most of us. Yeah. Um, and you know maybe where a lad would fit in or where he wouldn't. So I would advise them to speak to your speak to yourselves is probably the, the best way for them to get started. Work hard at school. Robert touched on it earlier. A uh, personal hit of mine is when they come to us and we have to give them a day release to go and get the essential skills. Mm -hmm. um, that's a bugbear me. They've had 12 years of education. Surely we can get them to that level before they go looking for employment. And um, just really the young people um, be motivated, if you know me, a great industry to get into. Plenty of opportunities within it. And I would encourage them to get into our industry and get on with it through yourselves. Well, thank you. Darren, from your perspective, um, the, the work trial aspect of, of what Robert was saying, would that be something that would appeal to yourself as an employer? Uh, and, and would that, do you see that as beneficial to the employer and the young person? Yes, we definitely do. I think um, for us, we, we've done it with a little bit of success. Haven't done it for a full week, but we've tended to do it for a day where we've brought uh, applicants who we've shortlisted and we've brought them into our dealerships and we showed them around the facilities, let them see what a, a typical day looks like in, in our dealership. Um, we've bought him up with people who've gone through the apprenticeship program. Um, and that's been useful in two ways. Number one, it lets us understand that applicant and lets us see a bit more than what we tend to see on either an application form or a CV. Because as we all know, sometimes that's not the, not the case. It's not the true person. Um, the other benefit of that is it lets people understand what other opportunities they are. Because when they have applied to us, they, they think, oh, well, it's only, I can only be a, a motor vehicle technician. Um, I've got my maths in English um, and everybody I talk to tells me to go and be a technician. When we do that tour of the dealership and they realize they can actually look at an after sales apprenticeship or they can look at a parts apprenticeship, it does actually open up. And it, in some ways, the, the, the better side of it is it, it nearly lets some people make the decision themselves to withdraw from the process. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. making sure that the applicants are a good fit for us too. And I think that's good advice because, you know, I have, I have a son and he always wanted to be a teacher and then he got work experience in a school and he thought, no way, <laughs> you know, so it, it can be the same for a, a young person who maybe thinks they've, they've got uh, a different idea of what it's actually like. And that day or that week of work experience really does give them a, a fresh understanding of, of what it really is like to work in the industry. So th thank you folks for that. Um, our final question then is, how do other employers find apprentices and how does it work for them? Um, so I'll, I'll come to that one maybe um, because we've, we've basically covered that throughout all the other questions that have, have been fielded all, all evening. Um, employers use different methods. Some advertise in, in the local press, some use word of mouth. Some use ourselves, and, and as Robert spoke about there, there's an apprenticeship brokerage service here. So, uh, for any of the employers that are are tuned in tonight, um, you know, please make use of our apprenticeship brokerage service and speak to Robert. Uh, and it's it's basically where we will bring the young person in, we'll interview them, and we'll put them through our aptitude testing process. Uh, and then with that, we can we can make recommendations with confidence that the young person is suited to the the. Uh, apprenticeship opportunities that are out there. Um, Caroline and Samuel are, are testimony of that process. They've both come through that aptitude testing process, the interview process, and then they've had help with uh, securing their employment. So the one thing I would say um, for any prospective employer who's thinking of, of taking on an apprentice, um, it's not that we get you to the apprenticeship application stage and that's it there's ongoing support, there's ongoing uh, reviews in the workplace carried out by the trainers, there's ongoing support with Robert and as Caroline said, a pastoral support role. He meets with the apprentices each block week that they're in here with us. And we're here to support you as an employer. And I hope that uh, Billy and, and Darren have, have borne testimony to that as well tonight in the discussions that we've had. Um, I would like to just open the floor to anybody who has any final questions. We're just about two minutes off our finishing time. 
So if anybody has a question, if you want to unmike or unmute your mic and, and ask the question orally, that's fine. Or if you want to pop it into the Q&A, um, we, will, we will get to that with you in, in a moment or so. I used, I used to work for a director who uh, would always finish a meeting with, okay, has anybody any questions? No, that's good. Let's go. <laughs> so um, it looks like nobody has any questions. Uh, so, folks, thank you very, very much. And to our panel, uh, this would not have been the event that it has been without your input. So I, I, from the bottom of my heart, I really do want to thank each and every one of you. And for the participants, the, those in our audience, I hope you've learned something. And uh, I see a few messages coming up here saying thanks very much. Everybody, enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, take care. Stay COVID safe. Keep yourselves good, and uh, we'll hopefully see all of those of you who are applica applicants to the program. We'll see you here very shortly for interview and in September for enrollment. And thank you and take care. Good night. Thanks, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Billy, Darren, Caroline, Samuel. All the best. Thank you, folks, for inviting us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Bye -bye. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you.